Hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go through how to set up for a flight in the Boeing 787-10 Dreamliner for Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is using the heavy mod, uh, the heavy division mod that overlays on top of the premium deluxe uh, Dreamliner that's in the sim. So, hope you guys enjoy the short series if you like. We're going to do an end-to-end -end full flight, a bit of a, a, an equipment ferry from Gatwick to Manchester over the course of a few videos so I hope you guys enjoy it click like click subscribe as well if you've got any tips tricks yourself be sure to let everybody know in the comments below as well so we're at stand 49 middle at London Gatwick using the MKVY awesome freeware scenery on flightsim.to and uh, you can hear the APUs on already so into the flight deck and all we've got on at the moment is battery on turned external power on because we have that and then I turn the APU generators on and flick the APU generators on to start the dial there on to start and away we went I've got nav and logo lights on down here and the passenger seatbelt signs they don't go to auto yet but I've just turned them on already and anti-ice I've set to auto for those there too. All the other lights are off for the time being and I've turned glare shield and uh, displays and things up as well to max. So fuel currently pumps are off but of course we can turn those on when we're ready. We can turn the rear ones on for the time being just because the APU is on but again I'm a no Dreamliner expert and this just currently works for me at the moment with the mod as it is. So, to the MFD then. Flicking straight over to Simbrief so you guys can see what the crack is here. I'm generating a route from Gatwick to Manchester in the 787-10. And there's our route. Lambourne 5, Papa, via Lambourne. November 5, 7 to Wellin. Tango 420 to Trent. And the Dane 2 Alpha arrival at Manchester Airport as well. And using Erac 2104. You can see our route there on the map, fairly simple, nice and short, and we hit generate flight plan. If you guys haven't set up your SimBrief integration yet and you want to know how, then check out my little tutorial specifically showing you guys how to do that and import flight plans using the uh, heavy division mod for the Dreamliner. So check that out, hopefully that will answer a lot of questions for you. And there we go, routing. That's our online flight plan all set now, and you can see our block fuel of 10,000 kilograms. Seems quite a lot, but it's obviously got a diversion back to London Heathrow, bizarrely. But we'll go with whatever it says for the purposes of today, for the sake of example. So then, route, route request, load flight plan from Simbrief, and in it goes no ref waypoint error so that's interesting let's go to legs what have we got here we've got well in and uh, everything before that so Lambourne and November 5-7 didn't go in fantastic so we're going to want to add in a departure from Gatwick it's 08 right Next page, Lambourne 5 Papa. We could choose one Zulu if we wanted to. Executes. You can see that's gone in there. KK here to Lamb and then November 5 7 to Wellin. is actually just a direct line so that's fine but then it's not put in anything else that Tango 420 airway it's not entered that whatsoever so that's a bit frustrating so to fix that we head to our route page click across to 2 and you can see there we've got direct to well in we don't want that that is how it's entered we can change this to November 5-7 
dicho cuál es. And it's the first one at the top should be the closest. We can delete this. By clicking the delete button and then selecting that waypoint as I've just shown you guys and from well in then we want the Tango 420 airway T420 on the left button to Trent TNT enter that and again the top one should be the closest if you get stuck have a look on Simbrief a little uh, handy hint for you find Trent and you can see the longitude and latitude on the map itself, so 53 north and uh, 1.6 west roughly. So top one is the closest there. And then from Trent it was the Dane 2 Alpha, but that's our route basically, so uh, activates present there. Naturally exec should have a green light on it, but at the moment it doesn't always work, so if we see activate, we press execute and we can now see our route so everything up to Lambourne then November 5, 7 to Wellin and then Tango 420 to Trent so there's all our waypoints in there and then our arrival into Manchester so if we want to we could do this nearer to our arrival of course but if we want to do that now we could go in and add our arrival into Manchester but I'll do that nearer to top of descent to show you guys how to do all that properly. So the next consideration then is our standard instrument departure here at Gatwick for the route that we're flying today and of course as you guys saw a second ago we selected the Lambourne 1 Zulu departure. So departing 08 right because of the weather you can see what to expect there and that is in our flight plan. There's also a VOR at Lambourne we can tune that in 115.6 and by tuning that we were going to be able to see when we've overflown it so onto the MFD navrad page and we can type in here 115 decimal 6 and in it goes ADF is NDBs and if we're going to fly a course or a radial we could add that in here if we wanted to as well but all we want to do is just see when we've overflown it and maybe get a, a measure of distance to Lambourne VOR so we're just going to tune in the frequency as it is for this and the C-Link was 6000 so up here let's tune up to 6000 and let's put our bank limiter on automatic so it can decide itself flight director needs to go on of course as well and on the charts there was a max speed of 250 knots for the departure routing So let's arm 240 for now. Let's clear our caution because it was door open. That's fine. Click init ref. We want to POS EGKK. We need to align our GPS, of course, and gate. Thankfully, this great scenery tells us we're at 49 middle. We can type in here 49. Set heading. We're on a heading of 350 at the moment. And GPS position is at IRS. Click that and paste it in there. That's telling the aeroplane where exactly we are in the world. Click in at ref again and go to performance. Now, there's a little tip here, you can see cost index of 25, all of this has come in from Simbrief itself. So click onto the heavy mod, button, payload manager, and you can see here we've got fuel on board in gallons, 16,692. We can change these values to whatever we want. So we click the drop down menu here, and we can see kilos, and we only need 10,000 719 kilograms 
So quick little conversion, let's change 10,719 to pounds. That's 23,631 pounds. And let's convert pounds to gallons. And it's given us 2,831 gallons. What we're doing that, we can get rid of the jet bridge. Um, so in here, let's type in 2,900, let's round that to there. And you can change your payload here if you wish to as well. So we could change in pounds, we could change that to 3,200, 32,000 pounds. And then we could just hit execute. And you'll see now it's recalculating the aircraft, changing the fuel on board, and it's trying to balance everything with the center of gravity as well. You can see there as well on the display all of our fuel tabs and things have changed too. And that's that done. Let's check the UI. And you can see now we've got 26% in each of the tanks. So actually we need more fuel. So let's just go for 3,500. Execute. You can see our weight changing there as it's recalculating everything. This is just an example, it's not an exact science what I'm doing at the moment, but you guys will want to plan it carefully, especially if you're doing long call of course. And uh, more fuel's better than less. So that's done. In it ref, perf page. If you want to add in a fuel reserve you can. And uh, you can change your cost index and everything there as well. Cruise altitude, that will need to be changed potentially, but we're going to go with flight level 240 for this today. And we want to now click here to the next page. So, thrust limitations. The current meta is uh, 1020, temperature is 10 degrees Celsius, so that's actually correct. It's reading that nicely. And we can do climb one there too. So take off. This is where we're going to be setting exactly what performance we're going to require from the aeroplane during departure. We're quite light. I'm going to go with flaps five. So in that goes. Thrust reduction altitude 1500. And that's where we're going to get told to bring the thrust back to our climb gates. And then in V1, V rotate, etc. We can just click the buttons. and it'll automatically feed that in for us, which is awesome. And that's that bit complete. The next bit's obviously approach, and we can do that nearer to the time. So, make sure our Q&H is set. We've got the standby instrument there that's linked. Let's change it here. We want to change the inches of mercury to HPA for the UK. And pop that to 1020, good stuff. So let's go into here and we want to select in waypoints. We've got traffic there. VOR left because we're going to track that VOR. And if you don't want the engine displays on the left hand side, you can just click the ICAS button there and it'll flick it all across. Let's bring that range back a little bit as well. Change heading to runway heading. It's a Boeing thing. Uh, we're pretty much ready to go. If we're on VATSIM, of course, we're going to want to get our clearance and add in our transponder codes as required. If they tell us to ident as well, we'd ident. Make sure you've got your frequencies set to whatever you need. And we can transfer that across. So entering it put it into the standby column and then you can transfer that across. Change your panel lighting so that you've got your screen showing the correct brightness, whatever you guys want to make it good for you. And we're now ready to go. Ground equipment's clear, we've got rid of all the uh, air bridge and everything else. APU is on, 
and all we've got to do now is get our clearance for push and start, start the engines, taxi to the runway and get on our way. Hope you've enjoyed this first little video of the mini-series for the Heavy Division mod. Of course things will be updated over time as well so there might now be buttons by the time you guys see this that are working that weren't in this original recording. So bear that in mind as well. I hope you found the video useful. Be sure to click subscribe down below and check out the rest of the little series. Thanks for watching.